Good morning, Connections. It's Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. Where does the time go? So glad you're here again this morning. Uh, woke up nice and early to get your day started well. Uh, nothing better than starting it together, more importantly, with God and in His Word. Got lots of ground to cover today, so let's get started. Just a reminder, you can find more information about Connections Church and our mission and all of those that are part of Connections Church at connect-ag.org. Um, trying to keep current stuff up there, especially in the notes section and also making sure that things don't get stale on there. Um, that's primarily my job right now. At some point, hopefully in the future, we will have uh, other a whole team that's involved in that. But right now, great content uh, should give you a, a good sense of who we are, how to contact us, how to stay in touch with us during uh, pandemics and all other crises. So uh, go out, visit connect-ag.org today and uh, let me know what you think. All right, getting back to our daily devotion. Now, if you recall from yesterday, we are in Ephesus and Paul met with the opposition that he has met with many times before within the synagogue, people who uh, just made it themselves obnoxious and um, the ones that Paul had been gaining for for three months of preaching on the Sabbath uh, were beginning to waver because the noise and the chaos within the synagogue was making it difficult for them to hear and receive the word. So Paul left. But unlike um, when building a church or building, uh, planting many works, Paul is, is recognizing now and led by the Holy Spirit that he is to grow roots in, uh, in the church that have already been established. So here in Ephesus, for instance, he leaves, but he doesn't leave Ephesus. He goes out and finds a, a new venue, and instead of sharing the gospel just on the Sabbath, he shares the, uh, the gospel daily. And not only to the Jews, but also to the, the, the Greeks and, and uh, all the Gentiles in the community. So what the devil intended to squelch the gospel actually expanded um, Paul's opportunities to share the gospel not only in the synagogue and one day a week, but multiple days a week with a broader audience. So we left that lesson uh, understanding that God is a creative God and he has ways to continue to expand uh, the church, whether it is by planting new churches or bringing expansion to existing churches. And since we are an existing church, it, it certainly piques our ears when we see that God is creative and that we always need to be looking for ways to, to expand our mission um, even though we're a well-established church. So uh, great uh, uh, food for thought from yesterday. And unfortunately today we are going to meet yet more opposition, and perhaps from a place that um, we didn't expect. At least up until this time with Paul's missionary journeys, most of the, the opposition has been coming from internal opposition within the Jewish community, uh, unacceptance of this, this gospel, this um, uh, claiming that the Messiah has returned and that Jesus is, is that Messiah, um, threatened the power base of the existing establishment and um, you know, caused a lot of, of, of uproar. But now we're into the third of, of the missionary journeys and opposition is going to come from a completely different direction. And that's what we're going to, to take a look at today. But a quick stop, if you were with us on Sunday when we studied Thessalonians, you'll recall 
uh, Paul giving this counsel to the church in Thessalonica. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. So we really emphasize this uh, making an impact in your community by displaying godly attributes and a strong work ethic that you are, are willing to, to work with your neighbors, to, to provide assistance when called upon. Uh, all of these things are, are, are directly from, from Paul's own playbook of exactly how he has worked throughout his missionary journeys as being part of the community and also sharing the gospel. And so we are called to, to, um, to serve our communities. And by serving our communities, we make impact and give them an opportunity to hear the gospel message where they may have never stepped foot in a church. They see and hear the gospel message on display through our own actions and our own testimony. So that's the positive that we see uh, when God is at work in our communities, but we have to recognize we have opposition, and that opposition does not come from those who do not share our beliefs, does not come from those who um, find Christians you know, distasteful. It comes from the source, and the source is the devil himself. And he has many different weapons that he uses, and he is never happy to see uh, a shift in our community. He's never happy to see uh, people who were asleep and blindly following the world now be awakened to the gospel message and uh, celebrate Jesus, live lives that, uh, that shine light into the darkness, Those, that is the source of, of our true opposition. And all of these other uh, sources are just the tools that he uses. So in this case, when we're studying Paul's missionary journey, uh, the, the weapon of the Jews within the synagogue has been, been muted. And Paul has found... Uh, a new audience and the church is expanding but that doesn't mean the devil's just going to lay down and and let Paul have Ephesus and that's what we need to look to today about that time this is Acts 19 verse 23 about that time there arose a great disturbance about the way a silversmith named Demetrius who was who made silver shrines of Artemis brought in a lot of business for the craftsmen there. He called them together along with the workers in related trades and said, you know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business. And you see here how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus in practically the whole province of Asia. He says that gods made by human hands are no gods at all. Look where the devil is uh, stirring up trouble now. Not within the Jewish community, not within... Uh, Paul has been received by... Uh, the community of Ephesus, you know, and, and people are responding. Paul's ministry is making great impact. Well, what's another powerful weapon other than threatening your own position and status and all of the things that stirred up the Jewish community? Threatening someone's pocketbook. We have witnessed that from you know, our interactions in the world, that the greed and the, the belief that we have the freedom to 
um, to make money and to to make as much money as we can possibly make and in the world's case it doesn't matter um, you know, who you have to scam who you have to to, to, to stomp on to, to accumulate wealth the accumulation of wealth is in its own um, a religion uh, a pursuit of of um, of money and that's a powerful force and when when we talk about keeping our head on a swivel we need to be prepared that we're that perhaps the greater opposition isn't going to come from those who do not share our beliefs um, you know in a uh, Jew versus Muslim versus Christian versus Hindu our greatest opposition is going to come from those that we threaten on a different level. And in this case, those <laughs> that Paul is, um, has stirred up and his ministry has stirred up are those that um, feel that they're being threatened by Paul's ministry because he's stealing business from them. Just be aware that the devil is is never sleeps. He is always crafting a new instrument, a new weapon to use against us. And it is our job on a daily basis to be aware of all the different weapons that he may be crafting and seek God and his protection and his will on how to, to, to defeat those weapons. Continuing. In 28, when they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great Artemis of, of the Ephesians! And soon the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized uh, Gaius and Aristarch Aristarchus, Aristarchus uh, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, and all of them rushed into the theater together. So... Paul has been in Ephesus now for two years and sharing the good news, sharing salvation, mercy, grace, forgiveness. Take care of your neighbor. Serve your community. How could any of these things be offensive well, to those that are, are anchored in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, they aren't offensive at all. But to the world, they're a threat. To the world and to the devil himself, it represents a shift. So any time that we feel that we are gaining ground, that we are, are in in sync with God, that we are, are seeing our, our churches expand, our mission expand, and, and God smiling upon us, we celebrate. But as we celebrate, we need to be aware that the devil is crafting a weapon to, to thwart that effort. Now, God is much greater than the devil and Anyone who tells you difference is a liar. Well, we've already spoken of perseverance. We've already spoke of, of, of pushing back against the opposition and all of the things that, um, that grow deeper roots. We began our discussion today talking about this is the time when God is growing deeper roots in the existing works, the churches that have already been planted um, by Paul by the time we're getting to the third missionary journey. One of the things that, that uh, encourages a tree to, to grow deeper roots is not a, um, all the water it can drink, not all the nutrients it can, can possibly have right there in, in a small vicinity of itself. To grow deeper roots means to go through difficult times and, 
and be uh, sending new roots out to find new sources of nutrients and new water. Um, and that's the same thing that goes on within the church. It's during these times that opposition is, is raised up by the, the enemy that the church has a great opportunity to grow deep roots so that it can stand firm against that opposition and grow not just on the surface, but a lasting, um, a lasting work that expands the gospel um, and our mission um, even further. So this is a caution from Paul's third missionary journey for us, the church, to celebrate the victories and ministry expansion, but always keep our head on a swivel that the devil ain't done. He doesn't lay down gently and he is crafting a weapon, perhaps from a, a direction we have had no idea that we were, were stirring up, like the silversmiths in Ephesus. Finally, in 32, the assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people didn't even know why they were there. Another thing that we need to be aware of is how quickly we spoke of it earlier from, I believe, the first missionary journey and how quickly um, zeal and passion can be steered in a negative direction. And the devil uses that, and we need to be aware of that, that um, people that were one foot in, one foot out, perhaps even participating in ministry, uh, can be swept up in an opposite direction and um, just caught up in the emotion of, of the crowd around them. We witness that in, in Jerusalem, um, at Jesus's entrance and then crucifixion. And it's that same power of, of the crowd that uh, uh, we need to be aware of. So opposition comes from many different directions and the devil is crafty and uh, does not want to see our churches grow. And we need to be aware of that and always being um, scanning um, so that we are not caught off guard. God is never caught off guard, but we as his servants and as his church need to recognize that we have an enemy and it's the devil himself. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you, Lord, for uh, continuing to expand the, the church, continuing to expand the um, the impact that your church makes in our community. We thank you, Lord, for the favor and um, for the ability to, to share the gospel freely in our communities. However, Lord, we recognize that we have an enemy and that he desires to counter everything that we are trying to accomplish. And he has many, many instruments at his disposal. He is the prince of this world, Lord. He, if people are not in relationship with you through Jesus Christ, then they are potentially instruments that can be used against you. We ask today, Lord, for, for your eyes to, to see the world with compassion to see the world as, as, as you see it, Lord. You desire to see the world saved. You desire to see peace reign. Help us, Lord, to share your gospel message with all of our neighbors freely and protect us against the devil himself who desires to destroy us. Lord, help us remain faithful and on guard against any opposition. 
and grow us in strength and wisdom and knowledge and perseverance so that our roots grow deep and no matter what comes against us, we can stand and stand firm. Lord, we pray for our neighbors. We pray for our, our loved ones against the pandemic, against all of the things that come against us in this broken world. We pray for peace. We pray for our, our leadership, Lord. We pray for our nation. We pray for Congress. We pray for for our president. We pray for our judiciary. Let wisdom rule the day. We love you, Lord. We pray all of these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Go out and seek what God has for you today. And then be aware that the devil is on the prowl. Take heart, we win. Take heart, the victory is ours. We are just here to, to draw as many to God through Jesus Christ as we possibly can. Focus on today and allow tomorrow to take care of itself. I love you, I miss you. I will see you back here tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. We'll face down the devil uh, again. Until then, be good. See you tomorrow.